Well, there's a backdrop that many of you on the River Severn will probably recognise. You join me today at BAA Northwood near Bewdley. We've got the iconic decommissioned railway bridge in the background, former branch line of the Seven Valley Railway. If you saw my last video, I suspected that was going to be my last session of the season, but an opportunity has arisen to come and do a quick three or four hours this morning. So I'm here, I've come to Northwood, I'll show you this section, I'll show you how you can come and fish it yourself, I'll show you the parking, the access, we'll get some lines in the water and hopefully we can get one last, last barbel for the season. So here's the view of the river this morning, we've got about a foot of extra water on since the weekend. There's the view downstream at Northwood. Been a stack of rain over the last couple of days so we've got loads of colour in the water. The maggot approach which I used on the last video is definitely not going to work today so it's all about high attract smelly baits. It's a gorgeous morning to be on the banks though. Let's see if we can pick up one last barbel for the to end the season well. So I've very quickly got the rods out. I want to maximise the fishing time I've got today. So the upstream rod's gone in line with those darker trees there that are on the far margin, about a third of the way over, just in this sort of area here, just where that bit of ripple is. And then the downstream rod, that's in line with the right-hand buttress of the former bridge there. What I'll do at the end of the video is take you around, show you a few pegs on this stretch, I'll show you the parking. I'll do that at the end of this video. I just want to get the lines in the water, give myself the best chance of picking up one or two barbel today. So we'll do that walk around right at the end. So stay tuned. I'll show you the park in the access, just to make it as nice and easy as possible for you to come and fish this stretch yourself. But firstly, before we do that, let's see if we can get a barbel in the net. Well, I've got the upstream rod in for a rechuck, so whilst I'm doing that, I will show you the setup I'm using today. Just drop the rig down here next to me. Okay, so 14 mil CKO pellet from Vortex. That is my chosen hook bait for today. In these conditions, when there's plenty of colour in the water, you want a hook bait that's got loads of attraction. So there we go, 14 mil pellet, very standard hair rig, size eight wide gape. Just running rig, three ounce of lead, very, very standard setup. Mesh PVA bag of uh, smaller six mil pellet. Just hook that on and literally that is it. That is as simple as what the presentation is. Out here today, when the clarity in the water visibility is that little bit lower, you just want to home in on a bait with scent that just attracts the barbel into your area. That's the approach. Let's get the rod back out. downstream rod is off. We are in. This is holding deep. Feels like there's a snag out there or something.
Come on, buddy. Yes. Well, this turns out to be a far better barbell than I thought, actually, because I was playing it. It was holding deep. Honesty, definitely the order of the day. £9.13 on the scales. Would you believe it? Just a fraction under a double. But I don't care about that in the slightest. Taking on my favourite CKO flavour. 14 mil pellet. That iconic backdrop in the background there at Northwood on the BAA section. What a stunning barbell that is. Well, this barbell's had about 10 or 15 minutes now, just resting in the edge. So I'm looking for signs that he's kicking, moving actively. Which he's definitely doing that. So I'm happy. So I release the fish and just drop the net cord. He's got his nose stuck in the fold of the net there. This is difficult this morning because of the state of the banks under feet here. That's it, there we go. It's treacherous stuff here. That barbell's released nice and safely. Well, what a fantastic uh, first barbell of the session that was. And if that's the last one of the season, I'm well chuffed to have uh, finished the season on that. I've got to be honest, the wife had sent me a text and I just picked my phone up to have a look at it to see what she'd said. And I missed the actual tip fly over, but I stirred the click of the bait runner, which grabbed my attention. So yeah, not good practice that, to be honest, but uh, I'm sure everyone's done that in the past. But uh, yeah, thoroughly chuffed to have uh, picked that barbell up there and. Uh, Great way to start the session. It's took about half an hour, 40 minutes to get the first bite. So we're gonna keep the reef cast going every 10 or 15 minutes. Look, those little mesh PVA bags of pellet just to keep topping the swim up, creating the interest out there. And uh, when the water colors like what it is today and the visibility is low, it's all about the scent of your bait, making the difference in the swim that you're fishing. So I've got the upstream and the downstream on the same line. So hopefully the upstream is going to feed the downstream swim as well. We'll keep the recast, keep those going, keep the bait trickling in. And let's see what the rest of the session brings. Well, it's a far more pleasant day to be on the side of the banks than it was a couple of days back. Quite bitterly cold that was. It's freezing cold for the rest of the day, but even though there's a little bit of a gusty wind about today, it's uh, it's a lot more pleasant. Shame the close season is about to hit us though. Gonna miss this for three months. But that just allows a change of fishing style. We've got to target some still waters. We've got plans to fish for roach, tench. And there's also a species that I've been fishing for about 30 years now, and there's a coarse fish species that I'm yet to catch in, in 30 years of angling. So uh, I won't tell you what that is yet. I'll keep that as a little bit of, of a surprise. But I'll be doing a few close season bids this year. So mystery fish as such. I'll do a session chasing those. Hopefully we can catch one. There's been a couple of anglers up and down the far bank so plenty of people looking to get out. So 
We've had about an hour now since that first bauble. We're about halfway through the session. So the next recast on the upstream rod, I'm going to push it probably five to ten yards further towards the centre of the river now, just to explore a different area. So stick with the downstream rod, rod on the spot that you caught from. We'll persevere with that for a bit longer. But we'll just change it up, push the upstream out into the centre of the flow, just a little bit further out. Well, look at that. What an absolutely epic place to come and spend a bit of time on the bank. Sometimes it's not just about the fishing. We've had that one barbell today, but what a glorious venue this is to finish the season on. If you haven't got a BAA card, £40 a year gets you access to many different stretches of the River Seven, including this particular section. It's just a terrific place to come and spend some time on the bank. I thoroughly recommend it. Probably going to give it about another half an hour or so, then we'll pack up. I'll get the kit back in the van and then we'll have a walk up and down the stretch. I'll show you a few pegs. I'll show you where the parking is, how you can come and fish this yourself. Yeah, who wouldn't want to come and fish this peg? What a gorgeous scene. So that's the gear back in the van and the session finished and also my season now wrapped up. So before we call time on the video, let me just show you the car park here at Northwood. I'll talk about the access and I'll just show you a few more pegs on the stretch as well. So firstly, in terms of the car park, so it's mainly hard standing. There's a little bit of mud and it's a little bit boggy on the far side there, but you've got to expect that at this time of year. There's room here for probably six or seven vehicles. You've got a secure gate on the far side. So it's a decent little setup. So the car park for this stretch is nice and easy to find. You make your way down Northwood Lane out of Bewdley. I'll put the postcode and the what three words location on screen. You come under this bridge here and then the car park is immediately on your left hand side through this gate. So once you've got your gear, just head out into the meadow out of the back of the car park. It's pretty boggy, pretty wet at the minute, so you definitely want a set of wellies on. The river's at the bottom of the meadow. The upstream limit for this stretch is in the far corner of this meadow, and then behind this hedgerow, there's another meadow on the far side. So I've walked across the meadow now, car park's in that top corner. This is the top of the stretch. There's the BAA sign there. That's the end of the section. The rain started to come down a little bit now, so apologies if there's any drops that get on the screen of the camera. Here's the first peg you come to on the section. That would be a great summer peg. You definitely wouldn't take it on now. It's a, a typical winter death slide, that one. Seven in the background there, looking great. The far side bank here is uh, managed by KDAA. They've got a, a match on there today. As you can see down this meadow, it's nice easy walk in between pegs. Another one here, this hasn't been fished in winter either. Probably a single rod peg there for the summer. So once you got across the meadow, 
it's nice and flat and it's dead easy to walk between the pegs here. Guys on the far margin there. Another peg here, grassed over again. This one's not had much action over the winter. <laughs> you can see why. But it's probably another good summer peg. I bet you there's probably a really nice trot there in the summer. It's probably a great float fishing peg, that one. So walking back down the stretch, getting back down to the peg that I fished today. Before we get there, another nice little peg here. Again, it's fairly steep down to the water's edge. So this is the peg I fished today. It's nice and open. It's not too steep down to the river here, so it's plenty to go at. Loads of work, water to work with. And there's the backdrop as well. So we're getting towards the end of the first meadow now. So I said at the start of the video, I'm fairly sure this bridge was a former branch line off the Seven Valley. Someone please correct me in the comments if I'm wrong there. Another peg in there. That's a single rod peg, that one. So it's getting slippy here, but you can fish right up against the structure if you want there. That has been fished a fair bit this winter by the look of it, so could well be a decent single rod peg, that one. Sorry about the wind noise in the background here, trying to limit that as much as I can, but so we're walking under the old bridge now. That's what gives this section a little bit of extra character. So follow the path through here. And this brings you out into the downstream meadow. So again, it's a pretty decent path. Easy to get along the bank. Some faster moving there, water out there. Decent crease line in this peg as well, just sort of along there. Probably a good chub peg this with uh, cover on the left and also on the upstream side. Oh, a little bit gutted now, the season's over to be honest. I'm sure I'll be thinking about that uh, like everyone will be, but it is what it is. Plenty of different viewpoints on it. Most people, I think, have the consensus it's quite antiquated nowadays, but I do support a close season of sorts myself, but the date range is all wrong in my opinion, but that little subject is a bit of a rabbit hole, so we won't go down that today. So there is a bit of a gap now until we get to the next peg. It's probably quite a bit of fishable water here if the uh, bankside vegetation was managed, but the BAA provide great value at 40 quid a year, so we can't grumble about lack of pegs. Gnarly old tree there with plenty of character. Many hundreds of years that thing's been there. So we'll keep walking down the stretch here. And towards the top of the meadow here, it does open out and there's a nice grassy area. So I'll show you that. 
I've fished that section at the top here a couple of times in the past, but not recently. Only fish it in the summer as well. So I don't know how it performs in the winter. There is a path down there, so that's being fished. Again, it's probably a summer peg, that one. So this is the top of the stretch. Just talking to Kev there. Really nice guy, nice to meet you, Kev. So we've got this nice grassy area. This is very different to the rest of the stretch. It's quite slippy down to the water's edge, but this is definitely fishable in winter. There's not that much cover here though, so it's different to know how many fish are gonna be held up in this area, but there is a crease line there. Sat water on the inside. This is probably a good area when the level's up. Add some extra water on. Probably well worth getting a line or two in here. Well guys, that is it. That's Northwood. Hopefully you've enjoyed the overview. And that is it for the season as well. So unfortunately, all good things come to an end, but we'll be back again in June. If you've enjoyed the content this year and uh, you want to see a bit more, please subscribe to the channel. That would really help me. And if you want to get in touch with me, then you can find me on Facebook. I've got a page there, Rob's Angling. There'll be some still water videos between now and June, bit of tension, roach fishing and one or two other species as well. So look out for those. I hope, hope you've had a good season yourself. But for now, that's it until June for the rivers. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you all again soon.